was telling us to find the zeros. So uh, a couple things, if you guys remember, what the zeros are is the zeros are, you know, if you're to graph like a function, you know, something like this. Well, the zeros are where my function, the output value is equal to zero. So what we like to say is when f of x equals zero, all right? So at these points, the output value or the y value or the output is equal to zero, right? So when we're trying to find the zeros, we always want to have it as f of x equals zero. Well, right now I have f of x equals negative three. So I need to get that to equal zero. So I'm going to get rid of that three right there. So I get six x squared minus 13 x plus six equals zero. Now I can see, I can find out what values of x are going to want to make this uh, zero. So then the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I need to see if I can factor this. So I'm going to say I'm going to take my a, remember this is ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to take my a times c, which is 36, and then my negative 13. And I think of what two numbers multiply to give me negative to give me 36, but then um, add to give me a negative 13. And I think of, well, the numbers that multiply to give me 36 are going to be uh, 12, 12 and uh, 3, and 6 times 6, um, let's see, 9 and 4 are also going to give me, and let's say if I did a negative 9 and a negative 4, that gives me 36, and it also adds up to give me negative 13. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus Instead of writing this 13x, I'm going to write it like 9x minus 4x plus 6 equals 0. Notice how, what, how I rewrote this with these two factors still equals my middle term. But the reason why I want to write this like this is because now I can factor by grouping. All right, so then what I need to do is I need to look at, well, what can I take out? And here, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take out a, uh, um, let's take out a 3, actually, uh, yeah, let's take out a, uh, a 3x. So if I take out a 3x, I'll be left with a, a 2x minus 3. And then here, I kind of want to get this to be the exact same. A lot of you would say, oh, well, let's take out a 2. Well, I'm going to want to get that to be a negative, so I'm actually going to take out a negative 2. When I take out a negative 2, I'm left with a 2x minus 3. All right? See, the reason I, I knew these, I want these to be the same, so that's why I factor out a negative 2. Well, a negative and a negative, we're going to make a positive, right? <clears throat> then I notice I both have a 2x minus 3. I can factor that now out. So therefore, I have 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 2. And my apologies, guys. This still all equals zero. So whenever any two value, any two, uh, whenever you have a number times a number equals zero, one of those numbers has to equal zero. When you have a binomial times a binomial, one of those has to equal zero. So we're just going to solve for what values would they equal zero. Let's do that work over here. Therefore, I have 2x minus 3 equals zero. And... 3x plus 2 equals 0. Add 3. Divide by 2. x equals 3 halves. Right? Got to do this fast. I'm sorry. Subtract 2 on both sides. 3x equals negative 2. Then I divide by 3. x equals a negative 2 thirds. So therefore, the two zeros of my equation are x equals 3 halves and f x equals a negative two-thirds. Hope that showed up. Yes, it did. Perfect.